Hey, Nathan, this just in. What is it? This is a 2024 Land Rover Defender 110. Now, you may think this has a country pack, but it doesn't, Nathan. It just has the country sticker. Yeah, that's like a $600 option. <laughs> it is. They do a country pack, which gives you things like a little shower and cladding for the outside of the wheel here and a divider on the inside. Yeah. And a sticker, but we only got the sticker. Yeah, there's actually a lot more to that package, but we're not talking about that package. We're talking about this vehicle, and also we're going to talk about what it's going to be competing against in the very near future. Now, check this out, Nathan. I got to tell you, my favorite thing are these faux steelies because they're 20 inches, which, you know, is because there's a large brake caliper under there. So you don't get the benefit of the big sidewall, but you do get the benefit of the very cool off-roady look with those like faux white steelies. Yeah, they look really cool, I would agree. Now, here's some good news. With that country pack and other packages that you can get, there's a lot of things you can do with this vehicle. And Roman and I were talking about this off camera, and this vehicle actually has a lot of options that other vehicles simply don't have. Simply put, this can come in a three-door, which is the 90, or it can come in an extended one, which is the 130. This is the 110. Yeah, so let's start with well, we always start, and that is what is under the hood. And, of course, there's different engine options. We bought one. Remember that? Yeah, we, we did buy one. Can we get it? Yeah, your hand is longer. Yeah, I know where this goes. <laughs> we bought the <laughs> one with the four-cylinder, but this has the straight-six turbo. Actually, if you guys have been keeping score, we've gone through three of these technically. Yes. Um, and that's, that's history. Under the bridge. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's ancient history. Uh, but this is actually a fantastic engine in terms of its power numbers, right, Roman? Yeah, it's basically 400, 400, but if you want to be technical, 395 yeah. horsepower, 406 pound-foot of torque, which is a lot, uh, you know, of power for basically what is, well, let's be honest about this, you know, it's kind of packaged as an off-roader, but this is more of an urban off-roader. Yeah, you and I go back and forth on this. I will say that this straight six, three liter, it's a mild hybrid, and unfortunately, it's not as efficient as I would like a mild hybrid to be. I'll give you those efficiency numbers when we give you the price at the end of this video. Okay. But I will say that this thing provides very good torque and it's extremely drivable around town and off-road. That torque comes in well under 2000 RPM, right where you want it when you're going over light obstacles. And I think these things can handle some pretty heavy obstacles and it's been proven off-road with the air suspension. This thing can get up over 11 inches you know, off you the know ground. You know my favorite thing is just to look. I mean, you've got this white wheel, you've got the white roof. Come on over here, Cole. You've got kind of this white stripe, and back here, you've got this really cool white tailgate with a white wheel on it. I mean, it's just a beautiful looking truck. I would dare I say it's probably one of the best looking vehicles in its segment. And the segment we're talking about basically are off-roaders between 20 and plus thousand dollars so the upcoming gx yeah uh, and the one that i'm really excited about and i want to compare it to and hopefully we'll do that before we give this one back is of course the ineos grenadier which directly competes against this yeah even price wise it does i mean yeah you could say g-wagon but that's 130 140 thousand $40, dollars yeah. that's way up but there is a flaw that this vehicle has i adore these and my wife actually likes these which yes. is like oh that would be great except she pointed this out this door means that you cannot haul long items in it because nothing opens on this the proper way. In other words, a hatchback style of the vehicle would make it more utilitarian. But with that being said, you still get this really cool rear tire, which I love. Yeah, you can't really roll down this rear window. Nope. So if you had a long, I don't know, piece of You'd have of to wood, use the roof. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to use the roof. Yeah. But it does have a camera up here. And I remember when we had ours, that camera was so cool because I was driving up uh, to the high country, uh -huh. it was in the winter, and this window was just covered with all kinds of crud, and that was perfectly clear, so I could see everything behind me using the camera that, of course, displays in the rearview mirror. Yeah, one of the, I think, top things about this vehicle is the interior and the tech when oh, it's sure. working right. Yeah, yeah let's go inside, let's go inside. have a look. Come on in, yeah. I love the interior, it's so purposeful. It's so uh, minimalistic, but yet rugged. What, I think what, what it's a, a fantastic. Yeah. This, their design, absolutely kicked butt and i think that everything that land rover builds should basically follow this that's yeah. what i think yeah it's really cool um i'm not in love with the volume button being over there <laughs> me neither we were <laughs> talking about this so the volume buttons here i guess the brits when they get their vehicle they take this and move this over here and move that over there and move this over here and that way it's a lot cheaper to build 
I bet you Bruce would say when we get our vehicle, they take this and move it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they'd say that. Uh, I'm not also in love with this screen. I think it's starting to look a little bit dated. It just looks too small. I love the design of how it's placed, mm -hmm. but it just seems a little too small now, especially when you've got things like the hyper screen in the Mercedes that takes uh, up the But that's ridiculous. That, that, that well, goes sure. beyond. Of course. Um, now, this is ZF 8-speed transmission, by the way. And yeah. I wonder what it's yelling at. Oh, it's probably some of the snow on the outside. But here's some of the camera view. The goose poop that's all over the place here? <laughs> well, it's migration season in Colorado, so the, the, goose are going, the geese are going nuts. Um, I don't mind the size of the screen at all, to be honest with you. If it were any smaller, I might gripe a little bit. But I think this is a, the placement's good, and it's logical. And I like that. And I love having this big shelf here, and it's empty behind here, which I like, too. Yeah, and this material is so cool. So you've got this yep. kind of... Rugged, plastic-ish, neoprene-ish, whatever the heck you call that. I, I don't know. I think this is leather. It might yeah, be leather. It, it, it does have the leather package. Yeah, so this has also the air suspension, which uh, I would prefer not to have, but I can see, you know, if it's you're driving, driving around, now. Yeah, if you're driving around town. Should we give it a little bit of the beans? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, right. I'm holding on. Are you holding on? You ready, yeah. guys? Okay. Cameraman? Here we go. We'll show you what this straight six turbocharged engine can do. There it goes. There, there goes the turbo. Once, it, you know, once the turbo kicks in, it's pretty good, dude. It's really good. It's yeah. Zero to 60 is in the five-second zone. At least it's sea level up here. I'm sure it's a little hair slower. But the bottom line is that with that mild hybrid mixed in with the turbocharged engine, this thing gets out of its own way great, and it weighs well, over 5,000 pounds. And I bet you the V8 would be even better. Now, yeah. I, lo I love the real buttons. That's it's nice. great. Yeah. I love, actually, the, like the heated steering wheel, which I just turned on my on, on my uh, thumb. Uh, control here which is nice the uh layout of everything in here is pretty damn logical i'm very happy about that this roof does retract or um, the panel here does which is nice to have <laughs> put some light in huh mm -hmm. yeah there we go look at that it's a full-size roof dude this is my prom date car in my mind yeah yeah because this is the thing that you look at and go wow she's pretty she is yeah, pretty. She's really pretty. She had a couple of issues, which we'll talk about at the very end of the video. And well, the I mean, to, to, okay, to me, the biggest issue is, and, and this is just a me thing, it's not a, you know, the old Defender was this hardcore... Tractor. <laughs> tractor. It was. It was a tractor. It's a good word for it. But it was also very good off-road. You know, now we have Goodyear Wranglers that are kind of off-roady. But, you know, we had some issues when we went up Red Cone with them. I don't want to repeat that meme again. I think we'll let that be water under the bridge. But <laughs> but it's kind of like if you wanted to live the off-road lifestyle, but you never went off-road in, you know, let's say more than a five or a six. So obviously it'll do off-road. It's a defender. Mm -hmm. But when you start pushing it to where like a Wrangler would go, it's going to start to struggle. It Sure, sure. Um, I think that... If you were serious about off-roading, but you wanted to keep it British, I would go the 90. Yep. Because the shorter wheelbase definitely makes for a better off-road vehicle. Uh, but then again, you lose seating capacity and, over and cargo capacity. So, you know, those are things to think about. The other side of it is that this is something that does everything very well. Yeah. And there's nothing well. wrong with that. Yeah, and yes. I, and I want to back up what I was saying. I, I, it's not just my impression. I mean, you're missing a lot of critical things like serious underbody protection. Uh, you know, seriously uh, rugged and beefy off-road tires. From Articulation's the not great. That's Arc one of the, always yeah. been my big gripe. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't have the greatest uh, uh, breakover angle. Um, and so, so you know, it, it's more than just me being kind of you know Mr. Colorado off-roader. But that doesn't matter because most people won't take this up red cone, right? Most people are going to take this and pick up their kids, or go skiing, or go skiing and take it on vacation. And for the, the, that, it's absolutely incredible. Yes, 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 and yes. But I've seen people work very hard to make these even a little bit more off-road worthy by, by adding some armor underneath, by actually giving them some ground clearance and better tires. That takes a lot of work, though, in order to make that all happen. Yeah, I mean, you can't... I'd love to see it from the factory and not from the aftermarket. I think that's that's the next step that uh, Land Rover needs to definitely And so you know what about. happened, right? Um, Ineos made the Grenadier because they felt that there was... A hole in the market that, that this became kind of too soft and so they wanted to actually replace it and actually they wanted to actually call it a defender but then range rover land rover said no no we're going to keep the defender name yeah for uh, good reason they were developing this and Ineos didn't know that yeah so one of the things we want to do this week 
is hopefully compare it to an Ineos. Uh, we've got one on order, so we're going to try to go down to the dealership in the Springs and actually put it next to one and you know do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference. But let's go to the numbers, Nathan. Yes, indeed. Can you guess what the combined MPG is on this? Ooh. We even had one, and I forgot that it was this poor. It's uh, it's like in the low 20s. 18. Wrong? 18. Ooh. That's no good. Yeah, yeah, but you I, know, gas is less than $3 a gallon now. Here. Right oh, now it is, but later on. Um, another thing about this vehicle is that this one, look, this has almost all the packages that you can get on this thing, so that means that it's $82,000, basically. Yeah, which is what ours in Eos with the off-road pack is going to cost. Exactly, so, exactly. So they're, they're really, you know, close. And, of course, the GX is another one, Lexus, that we're going to have to kind of compare to this because that'll be... Not as quite as expensive, but still not close. quite as expensive. But I think they're in the same. I, you guys might agree, they compete. I think in the same market. Now, here's the thing about this: there are still a ton of extra goodies that you can put on this. Even Roman, a winch. Yes, finally, <laughs> a proper winch. They say um, a slide out steps that can pop out to, to ease your entry in. There's scuff things Snork that they can put on snorkel. here. Snorkels. And you know it's coming hmm. to compete against this, the Land Cruiser. Oh, that's right, and Land Cruiser as well. But the Land Cruiser is going to go in a much lower segment financially. So this one definitely is still a yeah, luxury wait, wait, vehicle. Wait till you see the dealer markups. Oh, the dealer markups are going to make it <laughs> as expensive as this is. Well, I really do love this, though, Roman. I, 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 I'm so happy that they built this. I really do wish it was a slightly more off-roady. But at the same time, if my wife loves it, and if you give me a significant raise, maybe I, too, can own one of these. You know, Kent would say she's a sexy beast. She is a sexy beast. She she, is. She, I'm curious to what your perspective is, guys. Also, remember, in the very near future, we're going to be comparing this truly against its proper competition. Yep. So stay tuned for that. Go to altfl.com, and we will see you guys next time. Ciao.